what the weight of pardoning Julian Assange and Edward Snowden would be and why and why it's such a threat to the establishment right we you, you've seen a lot of people talk about it Lee Camp myself Ron Placone Eleanor Goldfield uh, virtually anybody that is anti-establishment anti-imperialist that understands and knows what Julian Assange has done and and the impact of his work um, and those that have been following the trial the show trial this wasted extradition trial uh, that has been torturing him, um, know that this movement is growing. That a lot more people uh, want Julian Assange to be pardoned by Donald Trump. You know, uh, especially when every November we fucking pardon turkeys. We pardon turkeys every fucking November and it becomes this big deal and the media does these puff pieces about them to make everybody feel good. Oh, oh look at this one turkey that's not going to, oh, he's going to get to live out the days as a, as a stud turkey uh, until next year. Oh, but the pardon only lasts one. Even for our fucking turkeys, we still, we give them one extra year to be like, you got to, you got to fucking get out of here, man. You got to find a way to get to Canada or Mexico where they don't know what Thanksgiving is. And, and that's the only way that you can survive, uh, you know, this this one year pardon that these presidents will give you. Uh, but at least we pardon the turkey, whereas real journalists that have never had to retract a story such as Julian Assange were like, oh, Russia. Oh, but he's Assad. What about the Assad and the Democratic? He he ruined democracy by revealing how we fuck over other countries and we're spying on our own citizens and committing constitutional crimes. Oh, but Russia. That's all we have to say about that. Every time, every time this guy gets brought up, there's always some kind of bullshit smear that people have to throw out there. Well, here's the thing, guys. There's a bipartisan support to pardon Julian Assange and Edward Snowden for what they've done, particularly Snowden. I think Snowden is a little bit uh, easier for some people to swallow than uh, than someone like Julian Assange, uh, despite the fact that I think they're they're equally important and and equally should be pardoned by uh, by Trump, uh, which you know, all in all, if if that actually does happen. Uh, would fucking piss off the elites to no to no end, um, and I think that would be that would kind of be funny. Uh, but you know, you, you have you have Republicans like Matt Getz from Florida and Rand Paul. You have Glenn Greenwald. You have you have members of the ACLU. I mean, this has become like a bi- like it, it crosses political ideologies because they all recognize the importance of parting these people at this point. Now, Snowden particularly has advocated to pardon Assange over him uh, because of his health condition. Uh, Julian Assange is effectively being tortured. That's, that's, that's basically what's happened. Uh, it, is, it is psychological, emotional torture. They spied on him. Um, they have kept him in Belmarsh prison. They're, they're physically torturing him there by, you know, not giving him, uh, like proper, uh, like a, like proper things to, like heat himself up. Like he's cold all the time. Um, he's, he's definitely got mental health issues for sure because of all this. Uh, the, you know, the Belmarsh prison has, uh, uh has had many, guards get COVID and they still won't give him a mask or let him be outside or any of that sort of stuff. Even though, by the way, he's done his term. He was, he was done in May. Uh, so he could have, he could have been released and they didn't because they claimed that he was a flight risk, which is like, where the fuck is he going to go? Uh, you could have gotten, gotten him an apartment, uh, or, or had him stay with somebody or just not in prison. Especially during the pandemic, where the fuck was he going to go? So it was a bullshit charge, and they're, and they're like, very blatantly torturing this dude. So, you know, Edward, Edward Snowden basically... Um,
Edward Snowden basically wants Assange pardoned because his his health is deteriorating and that's like he's like I don't want this dude to die uh, so it's more important for Assange to be pardoned than than me you know so which is which is a very noble thing to do now this is this whole pardoning Assange thing is is bad for the Biden administration. If you remember, by, the the reason why Edward Snowden is in the the exiled state that he's in is because of Obama and Biden. They waited till he was in Moscow. So basically, so here's I talked about this in in one of the fork polls that I did, but you know Snowden needed to find some kind of asylum because. They basically claimed that he was a treasonous traitor that, you know, was a secret commie bringing down America's freedoms from the inside when it was just like, no, he revealed illegal surveillance that a federal court has deemed is constitutionally illegal, is a violation of the Fourth Amendment, that you can't just spy on Americans all the time. Um, so they basically waited for him to, you know, he was trying to get to Ecuador for asylum similar to Assange, and they knew that he would have to take a particular flight route, and they grounded him in in Russia, in Moscow. Uh, They also grounded the plane of a Bolivian president because they thought that he was going to be on that flight when they had no proof that he was going to be on that flight. Like, they did some pretty fucked up shady things just because this guy revealed that the American government was spying on its people. And he didn't reveal that information to... um, to, like, intelligence agencies, like foreign intelligence agencies, he revealed it to a journalist. And he and he very methodically did that, too. Like, he thought about it. Like, he thought about who he was going to release this information to. And he picked Glenn Greenwald because he figured Glenn Greenwald was the right choice because he was, he was going to be ethical about it. He was going to re- he was going to actually report on it without any sort of biases, without any sort of uh, political ideology behind it, and twist the narrative in any particular way. So he, he releases the information to them, but what is the narrative that gets spun around? Because he got grounded in Russia, everybody thinks that he's a Russian spy. And the uh, Biden, the Obama Biden administration did nothing to disprove that. They just kind of let that shit run. They were like, good, let that fucking, let that story run. And so much so that Liz Cheney has come out against the pardon Snowden, pardon Assange movement to say that uh, Snowden is, is a Chinese actor, which has been debunked a thousand times over. But because the people that stranded him in Russia aren't really going to come forward and make any sort of statements because... The Obama administration hates whistleblowers just as much as the Trump administration does, just as much as the Hillary camp does, just as much as fucking pretty much anybody that is a government official. They fucking hate them. They hate whistleblowers because they want to commit the crimes and get away with it. And the whistleblowers don't let them do that. These real publishers and journalists like Julian Assange don't let them do that. They don't let them just commit crimes, fuck over the middle class, fuck over working class people, and just and just run amok. They're a threat to their power. Susan Rice, who is part of Biden's cabinet, um, has called the support for Snowden and Assange the lowest thing that the GOP can do. Actually, it's it might be one of the better things that the that the Republicans have done. I mean, the Republicans are dog shit and the Democrats are equally as much dog shit. But, you know, a couple of them coming out and saying, "Yeah, we need to pardon these people because it's you know, this is this is not a good look for America. It kind of feels like America is slipping into this authoritarian state that's not about freedom and democracy. Even they fucking see that. And it's a threat to them. This bipartisanship over Julian Assange, over Edward Snowden needing to be pardoned, 
um, is is really a threat to to the deep state, to the to the establishment elites, to the oligarchs that control American politics, the way that they control it. We're using money and lobbyists. Because once they do, they'll have to admit that the what what the NSA was doing was wrong, and have to pretty much collapse that program, or or the NSA in general. This pardon would effectively screw over the Biden administration's war on whistleblowers, which they one hundred percent want to do. By the way, is they don't want whistleblowers to be talking about these big issues. They don't want people to support them. So they'll run the same fucking gamut of bullshit excuses that Republicans do, right? They'll call them socialists. They'll call them uh, traitors, spies. Uh, You don't do that to a government, blah, blah, blah. All the shit that we hear. Biden administration is no better in terms of that. And now if they do, there's going to be whistles blown during the Biden administration, for sure. There's always whistles blown. They can't, um, if Trump pardons Assange and Snowden, the Biden administration then loses leverage on dealing with whistleblowers in the same uh, authoritarian manner that the Obama administration did and that the Trump administration did. So they don't want this pardon to go through. So you have people like Susan Rice come out and start defaming it, and and then use this whole us versus them, uh, you know, Republican Democrat ideology, which goes against what Joe Biden says, right? Joe Biden's like, I'm the uniter. I can I can cross the aisles and get more shit done. It's like, relax. Another crime bill isn't what we need, Joe. Jailbait, Joe. We don't need you reaching across the aisles to put more authoritarian laws in place. So just chill out. What it does, it calls out all the faux progressives, right? There's people that have labeled themselves progressives that aren't really progressives. They they label themselves progressive to to pull the the uh, you know the the disenchanted Bernie people and they kind of are like, oh, but we're come on over. Look how progressive we are with. With our, with our no criminal justice reform, no health care policies. <laughs> so, here we are. What, it, what, what it'll really do is it'll solidify freedom of press. That's what it'll really do. Um, I, I mean, I, I find it fascinating. Right, we we talk about press freedoms. We've been talking about press freedoms in this country, especially over the last four years. Right, uh, fake news has always been on the tips of every any tongue, especially when especially when it comes to whistleblowers, especially when it comes to journalists revealing shit. They're always like, oh, they're liars or fake news. I mean, this has been, but this has been on more on the forefront over the last uh, the course of the last four years, and. You know, you you saw how liberals and and even some progressives freaked out over Jim Acosta from CNN losing his press pass after uh, an altercation with uh, one of Trump's aides or something, and he got kicked out and he lost his press pass, and everyone was like, "Oh my God, what an attack on the press!" And right now, the American Empire is holding a publisher and a journalist. They're torturing him in the UK. And, and the Democrats, the king of all Democrats, somebody in his cabinet is saying that this is the worst GOP move of all time and trying to divide the public. If they cared about press freedoms the way that they scream about it, this would be a big deal. If Joe Biden truly believes in press freedoms, he would be advocating for the, for the pardoning of Assange. And it would throw these liberals for such a loop if Trump did it, because then if they do any, if, if a whistleblower comes out during the Obama administration, or sorry, the Biden administration, what's the difference? But uh, if they come out, uh, they can't be as strict on them. 
because it's going to be a bad look when everybody's like, wait a minute, didn't didn't Donald Trump, the wannabe authoritarian, the, the neo-fascist gangster in the White House, as Cornell West calls him, didn't that guy pardon Assange? Didn't that guy pardon uh, uh, Edward Snowden? And these guys who are, are uh, these Democrats who claim to be better than them are still trying to imprison them. Wait a minute, what the fuck is going on here? It's a bad look for the Democrats. Uh, so they are going to do everything they can to try to sway public opinion. I hope he does it. We have like three weeks. Why the fuck not? I hope he fucking does it. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed the content in this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. My content is highly suppressed because this is not topics of conversation that uh, that the corporate mainstream media really wants to, to, to address here. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, sign up for my email list. Uh, that way you'll get weekly uh, uh, emails with all of the podcasts and all of the videos that I put out there. Um, and make sure you go to my website and follow me there, uh, krishmohanhaha.com. That's going to be your one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. See you in the next video.